of organization. And that's a very, very powerful recipe. Throughout the 20th century, we created wealth through the vertically integrated corporation. It did everything from soup to nuts. Why does the firm exist? If markets are the best mechanism for determining how goods and resources are allocated, why isn't everybody an independent contractor at every step along the way in production? The answer is collaboration costs. Because the web drops collaboration costs, consumers can now produce. You can be a bank manager. You, you basically have got control over what you're doing, who you're lending money to, um, and what interest rate you want to set. I don't think we have a sort of conventional customer-supplier relationship. So it started with us saying to, to, our, to our users, we've been approached by a film company making a documentary. I'll add the press release below. They're looking to interview a lender and hear all about their personal experience at Zopa. Adrian, or Adelos as we know him, responded, said, Amanda has said no, as our house is a mess at the moment. I've just pinged off an email asking if filming could be in another location. We'll let you know. So he then says, I've spoken to film company this evening, made my demands for red and green M&Ms only. That was the first thing I asked for, and for tea to be made with milk from the male yak. I, I, we're different, um, and, and, and we've captured the imagination, and, and consumers like us. And, and, and banks would love it if their consumers liked them. I've been in business now for about eight years, and the bank always make you feel guilty, firstly, about borrowing. And then all the pomp and ceremony that has to go with it, with regards to the paperwork and, um, you know, declaring your soul, really. Mm. These are people that have lent me the money. They've all lent me in denominations of tens, twenties, thirties, forty pounds. Weird that I know how old they are. And then Mr Lender, who's seventy, um, he's putting twenty pounds of his pension. It's bizarre where they live. But I guess that's the whole point of it, isn't it? It's to, you know to bring you closer to your community and to the people that are helping you. Basically, my part-time hobby is as a mobile DJ. We do all sorts of venues, parties. In purely pragmatic terms, financially, we, we, we need the bigger lenders more than we need the smaller lenders. But, but we also need a sense of community. And therefore, anyone who wants to invest their time and energy in that sense of community is fantastic. Yeah, basically we're developing a community and a company around its users. So the actual company is, is changing all the time to match what the users are wanting and what they're suggesting. We think of customers as only being outside the boundaries of companies. The customer is out there. We do market research. We understand our customers. We push products out to them through traditional mass media. Well, now customers can be brought inside a business web where customers can co-innovate value and can co-create value. This one here, I've actually, um, I'm interested in bidding on the second one down. It's again, similar to like an eBay style thing. He's wanting to buy £3,000 to buy um, a car outright and so he doesn't need to get HP vehicle finance. The Zopa rate of 10% ten, uh, 10 works out roughly at £260 a month, where with a HP... The amount is £386 a month, I meaning it'll actually be able to reduce his monthly outgoings. I'm actually going to put in a bid now, um, and I'll, to be honest, I'll probably come in around the 9%. So I'll offer him £10. Well, I mean, the central tenet of the business is that people work together. So there is intrinsically a human element of what we do, which isn't in a bank. I think where banks have got themselves into trouble is, is by optimising... Um, their returns from consumers and, and in, in some ways um, being seen to charge uh, disproportionate amounts to people who are actually probably the, the most vulnerable people who can't necessarily afford to pay it. And wouldn't it be fairer if, if people who bounced a direct debit or went overdrawn for a day were charged a fee that was appropriate to their crime? court case began today which might produce that very rare event a bank giving money to its customers. Hundreds of thousands of people are affected. Maybe it's they who've bought sufficient copies of a single on the subject for it to burst into the charts yesterday at number 25. <laughs>
I fought the Lloyds and the Lloyds lost. They even paid the interest and the court costs. At first they sent me letters saying, this sir, madam, get lost. But I fought the Lloyds and the Lloyds lost. Oh. This world's going through an evolution and we, we haven't got to the end yet. At the moment, we've got to the point where the old model is is widely considered to be dead. It's a crushingly harsh industry. Um, people who do get a record deal, um, of those, 95% of them typically get dumped after their first album. A large proportion never even get to make an album, even though they have a record deal. And probably one in a thousand end up making a lifetime career out of it. And therefore, I figured there, there had to be a better way of actually discovering music, over and above discovering music, actually producing music. Slice the Pie is a financing engine for the music industry. Our core function is to connect music fans and credible bands and allow the fans to finance a professional production of an album and then share the proceeds with the people who have actually put up the finance. Essentially, it's like a virtual gig, if you like, you know, all, all the bands will get together, put all their songs in, then all the people will vote on there. Yeah, yeah, get scouted, all the people will vote, and then you get whittled down to, like, the last 15. It's not such a vote, is it, in the arena? It's more of a, a rating, they kind of rate your track. The good thing about it is, you know, you can scroll down, you can see all the, uh, the reviews that people have put. Sounds very much like the jam, nice upbeat, you know, they'll give us 6 out of 10. 7 out of 10, 6 out of 10. There's a nine. nine there's a nine Ooh. out of ten. Even if we didn't win the uh, the actual uh, showcase, I think it's quite good to actually get some feedback on your songs anyway. They're under kind of no pressure to give you a good review because they don't know who you are anyway. Yeah. Whereas if you met some, met someone in a gig, they'd feel kind of more pressured. Yeah. To not tell you the truth. And we don't know who they are either. So like, if someone gives us a shit review, you know, can't we can't we can't go and hunt them down and <laughs> string them up by the nuts and <laughs> beat them to a pulp and have people from all over the world giving their own honest, independent opinions. So it's a very, very reliable way of actually filtering music. It's not an X factor. It's about genuinely using your wisdom and your experience to influence um, who ends up making an album and who ends up succeeding in the industry. And that's quite intoxicating to a large slice of the population. People do it because it's fun, because they don't like uh, the traditional publishing industry. They, they do it as a hobby, they do it for intellectual stimulation, there are lots of reasons. I could put money in, in a bank and that bank could be lending it out anywhere in the world to you know, regimes or anything, you don't know what they're doing with, with your money. They're very open and very honest. You can go on and see how, you know, how, how simple it is and how they go on about how they make money. I mean, they're, they're not hiding anything. Um, you don't see a, a web, web page on Nat West's or Happy National's web page saying how we make money. There's been an expression for a long time that you do well by doing good. And I don't think it's been true in the past. Lots of companies did well by being really bad, by having, being monopolies or having terrible labor practices or having lousy products that they put a lot of money into advertising and, and sales. And companies are having to clean up, not because of regulation, they're having to clean up because of market forces and the power of transparency. We don't have a, a brand value or a sort of a mantra that says, you know, we will declare every mistake we ever make. It's, it's more, well, that people are going to find out about our mistakes and we do make them, um, so better to tell them than let them find out. So every company is becoming naked. And if you're going to be naked, well, fitness is no longer an option. Or if you're going to be naked, you better be buff. We don't fundamentally, I, I, mean, I don't want to sound too sanctimonious here, but I don't think we do anything that's fundamentally bad. Um, so, so therefore, we, we, we don't have to be ashamed of any fee we charge or, 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 or way we behave. I think before we won this money with Slice of Pie, but we're, you know, we're, we're doing probably like maybe, I'd say like three gigs a month for like, you know, for maybe a year. And like for all that hard work to kind of pay off, you know, like it, it's nice to actually kind of be where we want it to be. We 
we've got a huge fan base. We signed to a lovely label that lets us have complete artistic control well, over all like, our albums. That's the thing, it's not a label. We're not controlled into releasing something that they want us to release. We release whatever we want to do. Just to pass the time. I get a job like mine. I'll maybe drive a bus. I check the tickets and be one of us. The music industry has been extraordinarily well disintermediated, to use a piece of horrible jargon. Yeah, is, it, is it so far-fetched to think that other industries will follow? I think we get talked about, so I think in the sort of corridors of power we get talked about, and, and they therefore think, well, hang on a minute, this, this, this could be quite interesting, so if, 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 if this grew to a, a multiple of its current size, then actually it's, it's quite a threat. This is no longer about hooking up online or creating a gardening community. This is becoming a new mode of production. And it's beginning to fundamentally change the way that we orchestrate capability in society, the way that we innovate and create goods and services. And the corporation is going through, I think, the biggest change in a century. I think the, the losers will be the people who say, I'll always make better decisions. Uh, the winners will be the ones that are, are more open-minded uh, and understand that the world is changing and the internet is a huge opportunity to make things better. It shouldn't always be looked at as a threat. The change in the relationship between customers and companies is mirrored in the relationship between citizens and their governments. If you could actually combine that innate intelligence, millions of different diverse opinions from people who have different perspectives, you would end up with fantastic policies. They go from incompetence to complacency, and there are questions about his integrity. Aren't people rightly asking now, is this man simply not cut out for the job? Yeah. Prime Minister. Our party that brought in legislation in 2000 to restrict foreign right donors... Right now, the whole model of policy development and arguably of democracy is, is a broadcast model. It goes like this. I'm a politician. Listen to my advertisements and debates. Then go and vote for me. And then I'm going to broadcast to you for four years. And then uh, we get to do it all over again. You vote, I rule. Government in Britain is based on the party system. And although the elector marks his cross against the name of an individual, he is in fact casting a vote in support of a party program. This model is inappropriate for the 21st century. I'm not talking about people lobbying government or outside parties influencing government. I'm talking about, in some ways, unbundling and reconstituting what is a government. I think there's a great potential for decision-making to start actually on a ground level, on a, on a far less grand stage than Parliament deciding about immigration laws, but actually about really participatory budgeting. I, I represent a model railway club and we're, we're looking for some funding to purchase track and uh, this event they've got £20,000 up for grabs and the community decide where the money goes. Well today I'm going to, uh, to try and get uh, some funding for playground equipment um, for, for the children at the school. I have nominated a project which is to uh, regenerate a churchyard at uh, Mockham Parish Church. The whole idea is that the people of Poulton and only the people of Poulton will vote on each project and the £20,000 will be given away this afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to start proceedings in five minutes. Each group is going to have a three-minute presentation um, and we are going to have to keep it very strictly to three minutes. Let's start off then. We have David from Morgan Parish Church. 
And we know that people's perception that they can participate in decision making is a key driver, has a direct